Hello everyone, Dr. Maddie here, and thanks for joining me today for another lesson on foundations necessary to express robot motions. In the previous lesson, we learned about velocities in robotics. We became familiar with angular velocities and linear velocities, and learned that stacking them together gives us the twist. We also saw how we could change the frame of reference for angular velocities and twists. This lesson is about screws as a geometric interpretation for twists and how they can be used to express configurations in robotics. Please note that this lesson is part of the series of lessons on foundations necessary to express robot motions. Please subscribe to our channel and keep an eye on our website for current and future lessons. Don't forget to also share the lesson with your friends who are in the same path as you to master robotics and mechatronics uh, and help us with the mission to make robotics and mechatronics available to everyone. So without further ado, let's get started. In a couple of lessons before, we saw that every rigid body displacement could be obtained by a finite rotation about and translation along the fixed screw axis. And we became familiar with the exponential coordinates of robot motions. We saw that in order for us to define the screw axis, we needed to learn about velocities. And now that we have the necessary foundation for it, we can go back and look at the screw motion again. These tools will equip us for the robot kinematics lesson in the near future. In the velocities and robotics lesson, we learned that the angular velocity omega could be represented by a unit axis omega hat and the rate of rotation theta dot about this axis. Similarly, we can express a twist as an angular component and a linear component as a screw axis s and the rate theta dot about the screw axis. Any robot configuration can be achieved by starting from the home or fixed reference frame at time t equal to zero and then integrating this twist over a specified time to reach the final configuration as we also saw before. On the other hand, any rigid body velocity has a linear component and an angular component equivalent to the instantaneous velocity about some screw axis. Suppose that the configuration of the body frame relative to the space frame at any time is represented by a rotation about and translation along the screw axis S with the rate theta dot. Note that theta dot is a scalar that shows how fast the body moves along the screw. The screw axis S can be represented in two ways. First, the screw axis can be represented by any point on the axis, the unit vector in the direction of the screw axis, and the screw pitch h, which is the linear speed along the screw axis divided by the angular speed about the screw axis. This can be written in a compact form as q, s hat, and h. The twist about the screw axis represented by q, s hat and h can be defined using this equation. Omega is the angular velocity and it's in the direction of the unit vector s hat with the magnitude theta dot. And the linear velocity v has two parts. This part is due to translation along the screw axis in the s hat direction that exists when the screw has non-zero pitch. And this term is due to the linear motion at the origin, which is the result of the rotation about the screw axis. We saw before that the linear velocity during the circular motion that has zero pitch, it means that there is no translational motion, it's pure rotation, is tangential to the uh, circular path, and it can be calculated by the cross product of the angular velocity and the radius of the path. This is in the plane orthogonal to s hat. Now let's think in the reverse fashion. 
If we have the twist and we want to find the screw axis and theta dot that can generate the same twist, we would have two cases. Case one is where we have rotational motion and the screw pitch is finite. If the angular velocity is not zero, it means that we have rotational motion and the pitch H is uh, finite. And theta dot would be the norm of the angular velocity vector. And because omega is uh, equal to S hat theta dot and theta dot is equal to the norm of the angular velocity, then we can find this expression for S hat. The pitch can be calculated using this equation, and Q is chosen so that the, uh, so that the term minus S hat uh, theta dot cross product with Q provides the portion of V orthogonal to the screw axis. Case 2 is where there is no rotational motion and the motion is pure translation, and thus the pitch H is infinite. In this case, s hat is equal to v divided by uh, linear speed, which is equal to theta dot in this case. Note that in this representation of the screw axis, the pitch can be infinite, and q is not unique. Any point along the screw axis can be used, and it's a cumbersome collection. Hence, we opt for an alternative representation for the screw axis uh, that we'll see in the coming slides. As an alternative representation, the screw axis is defined as follows. First, we choose a reference frame and then define the screw axis as the sixth vector in that frame's coordinate as this matrix. The first part is the 3D unit angular velocity when the rate theta dot is equal to 1. And the second part is the 3D linear velocity of the origin of the frame when the rate is 1. We can conclude that the screw axis is a normalized twist, and thus the twist can be represented by the multiplication of the screw axis by the scalar rate theta dot. In this case, as we discussed, the screw axis can be defined using a normalized version of the twist corresponding to motion along the screw. As before, we will have two cases. Case one is when there is a rotational component, and therefore the angular velocity is not zero, and therefore the pitch H is finite. The angular component of the screw axis is non-zero, and the twist is normalized by the norm of the angular velocity vector as this equation. Theta dot is the angular speed about the screw axis such that the multiplication of the screw axis and theta dot is equal to twist. The norm of the angular component is 1 because we normalized it with the angular speed. The linear component is arbitrary with no constraints on it. Case 2 is when there is no rotational motion. Therefore, omega is equal to 0 and thus the pitch H is infinite. In this case, the motion is a purely linear motion with no rotation. The angular component is zero, and the linear part is a unit vector. In this case, the twist is normalized by the lengths of the linear velocity vector. Theta dot in this case is the linear speed along the screw axis, such that the multiplication of the screw axis and theta dot is equal to the twist. For this case, the angular component is zero, and the norm of the linear component is one since we normalized it. Note here that six numbers are needed to represent the screw axis, but the space of all screws is five-dimensional. And this is because either the angular component or the linear component has a unit length, as we discussed. As we also discussed here, if both the angular and linear components of the screw axis are non-zero, meaning that we also have a rotational motion, then the screw is defined so that the norm of the angular component is 1. Now let's see how we can define the matrix representation of the screw axis. Since the screw axis is a normalized version of the twist, then the matrix representation of the screw axis can be defined as this matrix. For more information on why it has this form, uh, please refer to the lesson on the velocities in robotics.
Now let's see how we can change the frame of reference in which a screw axis is defined. As we saw in the lesson on the velocities on robotics, the adjoint transformation could be used to change the frame of reference of the twist. And since the screw axis is a normalized version of the twist, we can use the adjoint transformation to change the reference frame of the screw axis as well. If the screw axis is expressed in coordinates of the body frame B, then uh, this equation is called the body twist, which is not affected by choice of the space frame. And if the screw axis is expressed in coordinates of the space frame S, then this equation is called the spatial twist, which is not affected by choice of the body frame. Thus, we only need to define the frame in which the tw twist or screw is represented. No other frames matter. A spatial twist depends on the S frame, and a body twist depends on the B frame. Now, based on our knowledge about the screw axis, let's go back to the exponential coordinate representation of rigid body motions. In the exponential coordinate representation, we would have two cases. If pitch of the screw axis is finite, then we have rotational motion, and theta is the angle of rotation about the screw axis. If the pitch is infinite, as we saw also before, then the motion is pure translation with no rotation, and theta is the linear distance traveled along the screw axis. As we saw in the lesson about the exponential coordinates of rotation, the matrix exponential is equal to the rotation matrix that can act on a vector or a frame and can rotate it from the initial orientation to the final orientation. Similarly here, the matrix representation of the screw axis can be used in the matrix exponential for rigid body motions. Thus. The matrix exponential for rigid body motions can map the elements of the Lie algebra or little se3 to the elements of the Lie group or big se3. And this means that exponentiation takes the initial configuration of the frame to the final configuration of the frame by following along and about the screw axis by theta. And the matrix logarithm is the invert of the matrix exponential and finds the matrix representation of the exponential coordinates. And this means that if we have a given configuration, we want to find the screw axis and theta such that if followed along and about this screw axis by that amount gives the same configuration. The normalized screw axis for full spatial motions is similar to the normalized angular velocity axis for pure rotations. As we found the closed form solution for the matrix exponential for orientations before, let's examine if we can do the same for the matrix exponential for rigid body motions. Let the screw axis be defined as its angular and linear components. Then we will have two cases. If we have rotational motion, then for any distance theta traveled along the axis, the matrix exponential for rigid body motions can be written as this matrix. And if there is no rotational motion, meaning that the rotational part is zero and the screw axis is pure translation with no rotation, um, then the matrix exponential for rigid body motions can be found uh, using this matrix. Here, theta is the linear distance traveled. The matrix I in the upper left of the matrix shows that the orientation doesn't change and the motion is pure translation. The proof is similar to the approach that we used in the lesson about the exponential coordinates of rotation for the matrix exponential.
The inverse problem says that given an arbitrary configuration, we can always find the screw axis and a scalar theta such that the matrix exponential for robot motions is equal to this arbitrary configuration. And as we saw before, this matrix is called the matrix logarithm of the configuration matrix T. To solve the inverse problem, we would consider two cases. If the rotation matrix R is equal to the identity matrix, meaning that the orientation doesn't change and we don't have the rotational motion, then we set the rotational part to zero and the linear part can be normalized using the norm of the vector P. Otherwise, if we have the rotational motion, we use the matrix logarithm on big SO3 that we learned in the exponential coordinates for rotations lesson to determine the axis of rotation and theta for the rotation matrix R that is given. The linear part can be calculated using this equation where we saw G in the expression that we found for the ex matrix exponential for rigid body motions. We calculated the inverse of that G here. Note that every single degree of freedom joint, like revolute joint, the prismatic joint, and a helical joint uh, for the robots that we talked about in the degrees of freedom lesson, has a joint axis defined by a screw axis. And thus, we can conclude that the matrix exponential and the logarithm can be used to study the robot kinematics, as we'll see in the coming lessons. Now let's see some examples that use all the knowledge that we have learned thus far to find solutions. Suppose that the configuration of the body frame relative to the space frame is as this figure, in which the origin of the B frame is at 300 in terms of the space frame coordinate. So it's three units away from the space frame's x-axis. The configuration of the B frame relative to the S frame, as we learned in the lesson about the homogeneous transformation matrices, can be found using the transformation matrix TSB. We want to find the screw motion, meaning we want to find the screw axis as, and the amount of travel distance theta about the screw axis that can generate the same configuration. Since the orientation of the body frame is not the same as the orientation of the space frame, then we have a rotational motion. Using the approach we learned in the lesson about the exponential coordinates of orientation for the matrix logarithm of rotations, we can easily find the unit axis and the amount of rotation about this axis that can produce the given orientation. So a rotation of one 20 degrees about the unit axis calculated will create the same orientation. Now using the second approach to calculate the screw axis, we can find the angular and linear components of the screw axis using these equations. Note that the rotational part is the same as the axis of rotation. And thus the screw axis can be calculated uh, as this equation. Therefore, a screw motion about the screw axis calculated with the amount of theta produces the same configuration defined by the homogeneous transformation matrix TSB. For more practice, let's find the Q S hat and H representation of the screw axis and draw it. Since we have rotational motion, then we use the equations for the first case and can calculate the screw axis parameters as these equations. Note that Q is not unique and the calculated Q is only one feasible answer that can be calculated solving this equation. Therefore, the screw axis can be visualized using uh, this diagram. Note that the screw axis is in the direction of the S hat and passing through um, the point Q that we calculated. Now let's see another example. In this example, we want to find and visualize the screw axis, which if followed at a specific rate, 
will correspond to the given twist with this equation. From the screw representation of a twist, we can write this equation. Since the rotational part is not zero, we also have rotational motion and we should normalize the twist using the norm of the angular velocity. Therefore, it's easy to calculate the rate theta dot and the screw axis as these equations. Therefore, the Q S hat and H representation of the screw axis can easily be calculated using the formulas that we've discussed. And therefore, the screw axis can be visualized as this figure. Note that the screw axis is in the direction of the S hat and passes through the calculated Q. Since the screw pitch is zero, the motion is pure rotation with no translational motion about the screw axis. Therefore, a screw motion about the screw axis calculated by the rate theta dot can produce the given twist. Let's see another example. In this example, we want to go backward and find the homogeneous transformation matrix corresponding to the given exponential coordinates of the motion. Suppose that the exponential coordinates of the motion are given by this matrix. In order to find the homogeneous transformation matrix representing the same configuration, we should find the matrix exponential corresponding to the exponential coordinates. Since the upper matrix part is not zero, we have rotational motion, and thus the rotational part of the screw axis should be normalized. Therefore, we can write these equations. From the screw axis that we calculated, it will be easy to calculate the matrix exponential of the motion um, through this process. First, we find the matrix representation for the rotational part of the screw axis. And using the Rodriguez's formula that we learned in the lesson about the exponential coordinates of orientation, we can find the rotational part of the transformation matrix as this equation. And the linear part can be calculated using the formula that we, we learned in this lesson. Therefore, the homogeneous transformation matrix representing the same configuration can be calculated as this equation. This homogeneous transformation matrix represents the same configuration as the configuration of the frame after going through a screw motion about the defined the screw axis. The initial configuration is the identity matrix since the B frame is initially coincident with the space frame S. Now let's see how we can find the body frame's final configuration after traveling the distance theta along the screw axis if the screw axis is defined in the space or the body frame. Suppose that the space frame S and the body frame B are configured in a space like this figure. The configuration of the body frame relative to the space frame can be found using the matrix TSB. We would like to know the body frame's final configuration, TSB prime, if it travels a distance theta along the screw axis. We would have two cases since the screw axis can be represented in either the body frame or the space frame. If the screw axis is expressed in the body frame, then the final configuration of the body frame can be calculated using this equation. In this case, the transformation matrix representation of the B frame relative to the S frame or TSB is post multiplied by the matrix exponential. If the screw axis is expressed in the space frame, then the final configuration of the body frame can be calculated using this equation. In this case, the transformation matrix representation of the body frame relative to the S frame or TSB is pre-multiplied by the matrix exponential. That's going to wrap up today's lesson. I hope that you get a good understanding of screws in robotics. In the next lesson, we'll talk about forces and robotics. Stay tuned. See you in the next lesson. Bye.